personality like? And I'm trying to decide what type of presentation I'm going to give. Because if it's a high beam, a driver, I'm going to be fast. If it's I, I'm not going to say anything, just let them the whole time, at the end they're going to love me. <laughs> if it's an S, I'm going to be thorough. If it's a C, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on my numbers. I'm going to be accurate. Does that make sense? Make sure in the hallway you guys can tell everybody that we're going to repeat this right afterwards. Okay? So let's go through it. So somebody asked the question, what's your brand? Well, I had a great idea when I started real estate to call myself a home for investment team. That's a stupid name when the market goes down, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My sphere is still mad at, mad at me for selling houses the first year. Right? So we've been changing our brand. And our brand is cocky. Our, our brand says we're a Ben Kenny listing. If you want to list with us, your home could have an opportunity to be a Ben Kenny listing. Isn't that cocky? Everybody say yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it works. All of our marketing materials have this logo. So when I would start out on my iPad, I would bring it out, I'd make the decision if I wanted to go through the presentation with Brian based on his personality. We're going to assume that Brian is an I, a S, or maybe a C. A lot of times, are you dealing with two personality types? Yes. Yeah, so you've got to tailor it. So I'm going to open it up and say, Brian, thank you so much for, for giving me the opportunity to come and talk to you about your home. And, and I was really surprised when I saw that your home didn't sell. I hope today that we get to the bottom of, of why we think your property had resisted sale in the past. And I would really like an opportunity to show you how I think our marketing plan, our servicing plan, is a little bit different. That seems very new today, Brian. Now, in, in my experience, there are three things that will determine if a property will or will not sell. The first is how well it's priced. Now, Brian, I would love to tell you that I control pricing or, or you get to choose. You get to choose whether or not your property sells or doesn't. The market gets to determine whether or not or exactly what the price of your property is. Because it's only your property is only worth what buyers today are willing to pay. Does that make sense to you, Brian? Now, we have a, a process that we do on our real estate team called the 555. And at the end of this presentation, after you commit that you think that I'm the right person to sell your property, we'll go through pricing if we decide to get to that point together. At that point, I'm going to give you five actives, five pendings, and five souls. From that information, we're going to compare each one of those property types, and just from that information, you're going to see what the high and the low pricing bracket for your property is. Our goal is to get right in the middle to the low side. See, Brian, in today's market, we're in a beauty pageant at a price war. Does that make sense to you, Brian? We've got to be the prettiest house priced correctly. Okay? At the end, my goal is to help you get your home sold for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Now, We'll know after the first 30 days if we're priced right because we'll have offers on the property. If we have showings of the property pretty consistently but no offers, we're at least 4 to 6 percent off. Right? If we have low showings and, and no offers at all, we're at least 6 to 12 percent off. This is based on national statistics, right? If we only have drive-bys, because I'm going to do a lot of marketing, a lot of people are going to be driving by, you're going to think they're peeping toms and they're going to drive by real slow, right? But they don't actually call me to come in, then we're at least 12% off. So at 30 days, I would like permission to sit back down with you and evaluate our pricing and marketing strategy at that point. Is that okay with you? Now, Brian. The second thing that will determine if a property will or will not sell is how it shows and how well we communicate. What I mean by that, Brian, is how are we going to showcase your property? See, six or seven years ago, what used to happen is I would sit clients, buyers down around a table. They would come into the room, and I would say, these are the ten different properties that I'm going to show you today. You know what they say to me now, right? What's that? They say, I bring them into the same exact room, and I'm all prepared the same way. And they say, Ben, these are the 10 different properties you're going to show me today. Yeah. They're deciding which properties to see before I've ever even met them. And do you know where they're finding those prime, those properties prime? Where? The, the internet. Which means we have to do a good job not only making your home show well when we get inside, and we'll talk about staging after this presentation, we also have to make sure your property shows well online. So we're going to take extra time to make sure that we have a great virtual tour, that we 
touched up the photos. See, that grass wasn't green before I got to it, right? <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had to make some changes. And they left the, the uh, hose in the driveway, so I had to Photoshop that out of my mistake, but I took care of it. See, I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure your property looks like the type of property that somebody would want to get off their tush at their home and actually come in and see the inside. Because wouldn't you agree once they get inside, they probably have a better chance of buying it? Yes, I would. So between videos, photography, Photoshop, this is what we're going to do to make sure your property is shown the best. Well, Brian, I specialize in helping sellers sell that have resisted sale in the past. Sellers like you, people that hired an agent for a period of time and that expired, people that hired an agent and they were frustrated and they canceled, or people that tried to sell the property on their own and they did not get the results that they wanted. Now, what I learned from this is the number one complaint I get from, from sellers about why they, they choose to, to interview an agent like me is one, they didn't like the marketing that the agent did. They didn't feel like they were doing the best job to uh, showcase the property. But the number one complaint is how well they communicate. But I'm going to make an assumption just by hanging out with you today. Is that I can feel that you're a little bit frustrated in the lack of communication with your last agent gave you. Would you say that was true? That's true. Okay, so, so we have a commitment where I'm going to commit to communicating with you every single week from the day I lease your property until the day I sell it. And you're welcome to call me or my office anytime you want. I'll give you email addresses and cell phone numbers. In addition to that, we have a software called Brivity which allows us to showcase you what we're actually doing online, where we can dive into all the features and benefits of your properties, where you can log in 24 hours a day and see everything that I've done to market your property, all the places I'm actually marketing it, all the tasks that I'm actually completed, all the showing feedback, the buyer showings, everything. You have 24, access, 24 hour access to this information. Does that seem fair? Absolutely. Okay, Brian. In addition to being able to see all this feedback, we're also a place to be market to buyers. So this would be another way that we're going to help get your property sold. Well, speaking of marketing to buyers, the number three thing that determines if the property will or will not sell is how well it's marketed. Now, Brian, this is the only thing that I really control. Other than the photography and the communication, you are really in charge of how well your property shows. Are you going to get a pre-inspection? Is it fixed up? Is it cleaned up, etc. Pricing, we already discussed that we don't control that. So this is what I own as a realtor. Now, looking back at these three things, Brian, which one of these three reasons do you think it was that your property resisted sale in the past? Say number three. Marketing. Marketing. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Is that an embedded command? Yeah. So marketing. And Brian, this is, this is why you're talking to me today, because I'm an expert at marketing properties. Well, the National Association of Realtors says every single year when they do the profile of buyers and sellers, they do a report that says how buyers found the actual home that they purchased. See, Brian, they tell us of all the home, people that bought a home last year, they survey them and they say, where did you first hear about the property that you bought? Well, I use this study every single year to, to uh, adapt my listing presentation into something that could work to not market my properties better and sell it faster. Now, let's go through each one of these categories together, and I'll tell you how I've adapted my marketing plan to work in this particular market. Well, the National Association of Realtors says that real estate agents are still important. I know a lot of people think that we've all gone away, but... NAR said that about 35% of all properties that sold last year sold because an agent like me said, hey, Brian, you should go out and see this particular property. This is still a pretty large number, even though it's dramatically reduced to what it was, say, 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's still nearly one-third of all sales. Because this number is so large, what we have to do is we have to have a marketing plan in place to allow us to market directly to real estate professionals. Our marketing plan is to, to send electronic flyers to the top agents in the market. And not just once, Brian, continually throughout the entire term of the listing. Deliver paper flyers to the top 20% of agents. See, in our market, 20% of the agents sell 80% of the properties. Make sure that we get the, the virtual tours up so all the agents in the community can see it. We're going to stand up at our local realtor and office meetings and talk about the benefits, prices, and features of your particular property. And I'm going to commit to you, Brian, that I'm always going to be in constant communication. And with your permission, honest communication. For instance, if a buyer tells me something, I want your permission 
not to filter it, just to give it back to you exactly what he said. For instance, if he walked in and he said, the house didn't smell good, I would call him and say, it's buyer. The buyer said, your house didn't smell good. Maybe you and I could address it. It smells fine now, but it's just an example. Make sense? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when we look at these five things that, that we're going to do to market your property to agents, in this particular category, Brian, is there anything that another agent has said that they would do to market your property directly to other real estate professionals that for some reason I forgot to mention? No. No. Great. You guys hear that? I assume that I'm doing everything, and if I didn't say it, I forgot. So that's the script and dialogue, for those of you guys who don't believe in scripts. Well, the next one is online marketing. The National Association of Realtors says that online marketing is extremely important. In fact, we know that over 90% of buyers' first step is to search for properties online. And nearly all buyers, unless they're from Denver, Canada, have the internet connections. <laughs> they, they, have, they have access to the internet, right? But what, what the NAR profile of buyers and sellers said, that 37% of actual buyers found the actual home that they purchased online. That's pretty amazing. The first time in history there's been a source greater than a real estate professional in finding the property. Still 86% of all buyers use a real estate professional to purchase. So this is massive. Because that's so large, Brian, we have to have a marketing plan in place to market our property directly online in the most effective manner. And what we figured out, shame of self-promotion, is that there are different buckets, bless you, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that. <coughs> So we figured out that there's five different buckets where you can market a property. And I'm going to talk to you about our strategy to expose your property to the most amount of people in each one of these buckets if that works. The first one is brokerage websites. And our technology allows us to market your property in a variety of brokerage uh, across a variety of brokers across the nation. For instance, your property can be showcased on Remax.com, ERA, Keller Williams. The number two company in the world, Coldwell Banker. <laughs> Which means it doesn't matter what broker you hire, even if you really like the Red Pen website, Brian, or the, or the Remax website, or, or one of the other ones, your property will be showcased on there prominently through my technology efforts. Now, the second bucket, what I really just tell them, I'm going to put it in MLS. <laughs> That's what they get to, right? You know, the second thing is national portals, Brian. What I'm talking about is websites like Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, Realestate.com, etc. What I've learned is that when you go to one of these websites, there's 27 pages of 25 properties per page, and the odds that a consumer is going to go to page two, let alone page 27, is slim to none. So, for your property to be effectively marketed on these sites, you need to hire an agent that understands how to manipulate these, these portals so that your results and your property comes up as fast as possible. Some of these things are easy. Some of them are based on the number of photographs that we post. Some of them are based on how often we update it. Others are just shameless capitalists that force us to pay them monthly fees so our listings can show up higher on the list. <laughs> We do all of those things to make sure that your property is not only put on these websites, but every agent is going to show you the stupid picture, but they're not going to show you how they're going to get it to the top of the results, and that's what's matters. That, was, that is what matters, Brian. Now, additionally, let's talk about classified services. Classified services would be things like Google, Kijiji, Backpage, and probably the most uh, notable one is Craigslist. And Brian, maybe you'd, you'd use Craigslist to to buy a couch or a gun or a car or something like that. <laughs> have you ever used it before? Yes. You know what the funny assumption is about Craigslist? Is that most people think you have to have a credit score under 400 to shop on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not true, bud. We sell million dollar properties, commercial properties, all the time, directly from leads we generated from Craigslist. It's also been very effective in marketing a property internationally because a lot of international clients are used to having Craigslist in their market because in a lot of markets they don't even have an MLS. That makes sense? Yes. So we have a, a process that we use to market your property on these pages. Now it's not like the average agent's process because the average agent, if they do this, they do it once and then they forget about it. What we're going to do is we're going to post your property, continue to update your property every 48 
now from the day I missed your property until the day I actually sell it. Now, what we found by doing this, Brian, is we're going to generate a lot of traffic and a lot of potential leads that have an opportunity to purchase your property. In addition to classified services, we're also going to market your property across search engines. Search engines are things like Google, Yahoo, MSN, and Bing. Do you use any of these, Brad? Yes. Which one do you use? Uh, Google and Yahoo. Okay, good. Now, I, I prefer Google, but we use strategies to make sure that our websites, our properties, and our services are featured on a variety of different uh, search engines. In fact, when you look at a, a Google search results like this, you'll notice that, that there's two types of places where properties can show up. The first one is where the arrows are pointing right now. These are pay-for-click advertising. This is where I'm paying to make sure that your property is showcased or my websites are showcased when somebody types in a specific term. Well, the next area right here, Brian, this is the Google's natural organic results. This involves a process that you don't need to know about or care about, but it's called search engine optimization. And I've figured out through websites like Active Range, blogging, my other strategies, to make sure that your property shows up at the top of the list. Now, the one question I always ask a potential seller like you would be, if you were a buyer looking to buy a property just like yours, how would you describe it? What would you type into the box at Google? Um, three bedroom, two bath home in Bellingham, Washington. All right, so, so if I could make it when somebody typed in three bedroom, two bath home in Bellingham, Washington, your property and my website was right at the top of the list. Do you think that would help you get your property sold? Yes. And that's something that few agents understand how to do and few agents actually do. That's something I'm an expert at. Now, feel free to search around online. If you ever think of another phrase that we want to actually add, if you want me to work on making sure your website shows up on, just send me an email or send me a text. Now, whenever you're searching and you, and you see on this list here in the, in the paid area, if you ever see somebody that doesn't work for me, I want you to click on their app, because that costs them a little bit of money. guys <laughs> there. Now, after search engines, Brian, we get to the last bucket. We're talking about social media. And we're talking about how can you get your property uh, showcased and marketed on the biggest time suck in the entire United States and not the world. And I'm talking about time sucks like, like Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. Now, I know there's a lot of people going there, so we use a variety of strategies to market your property on social media. For instance, we're going to create a video, we're going to tweet about it, we're going to post it on our fan pages on Facebook, we're going to connect with potential buyers on LinkedIn. We're going to do whatever we can to make sure as many people as possible see it. The only thing I would ask you is, Brian, do you happen to be a member of, of any of these here? Yeah, Facebook and Twitter. Facebook and Twitter. If I gave you a link to your property, would you mind saying, hey, I just listed my property with Ben Kenny, and here's a link to the property in case you know anybody that's interested in moving? Would you be willing to do that for me? Yeah, sure. Okay, so then you and I can kind of work together to get your property sold for the most amount of money. Now, when I add those five things up, Brian, here's what I've learned. Nobody has a more aggressive plan to get a property sold online. <laughs> Tonight, I do, but I always like to ask, and I'm going to ask you this a couple more times, if any agent that you had spoken to said they are going to do something else online that for some reason I forgot to mention? Amen. Okay, then it would be okay if I moved on? Sure. Well, the National Association of Realtors said that signs and flyers are still really important. In fact, they said roughly about 15% of all properties are sold because of on-site advertising like signs and flyers. Now, we have a variety of strategies that we use to make sure that we maximize the amount of phone calls, the amount of buyer inquiries that we get from signage. For instance, we're going to put out a variety of different directional arrows to make sure everybody in the neighborhood knows your property is for sale. Additionally, we have some tricks that we use to, to get buyers that may think they don't have enough equity in their property to call us that would be interested in yours. For instance, on top of your property, I'm going to put a sign that says, buy this home and I'll sell your home for free. What this does is this takes sellers that maybe don't think they have any equity to call me so that I can give them an opportunity to show them that they could, in fact, afford to buy your property, maybe by renting theirs out, and waiting to sell, or putting it on the market because they actually have more equity than they think. Or I could just sell it for free for them to help you get your property sold. Isn't that a pretty cool strategy? Yeah, it is. Now, additional to signs, we also do flyers. Now, one of the things that's different about our flyers, and notice that this one right here, 
it is, this is your inside flyer, Brian. The reason I know it's the inside flyer is because it has the price on it. We don't give buyers the price of your property because I want them to call me. When they call me and I get an opportunity to speak to them, I have a much better chance of getting them inside your property. So what we do is that we say to access the most accurate pricing information available on this property, call this 1-800 number 24 hours a day to get access. As soon as they call me or I capture his phone number, I'm going to call this dude until he buys your home or he dies. That's not <laughs> Additionally, we have this entirely voluntary program that actually nobody's ever volunteered out of. But this allows us to market uh, 16 different properties on the back of the flyer in exchange for us being able to market 16 your property on 16 other signposts across town. What we do is we carefully select properties that don't directly compete with your property. Larger, different locations, different price points, smaller, more bedrooms, more baths. View, etc. And we give buyers a variety of ways to call and access these types of properties. This increases the amount of sign calls on your property by 10 to 20 times, which means I have a much better chance of getting your property sold. Now it's entirely voluntary, Brian, as I said, even though nobody's ever offered out about it on it. What do you think? Are you worried about that? Now if you do this process and you forget to ask, they get really ticked off when they come home and it's the other properties on the back. I'll say it that way. Now, let's skip right into open houses. Now, Brian, you have a choice. You can choose to do open houses. In fact, the National Association of Realtors said that about 7% of all properties sold because of open houses. What they don't tell you is a variety of those, and probably the majority of those, were new construction developments, condominium developments where they have multiple properties to choose from. Does that make sense? Sure. Now, if you decide to do an open house, which we sure could if you want to, I'm just going to make one request. The first request is you lock away any valuables, jewelry, medications, firearms, <laughs> documents, because sometimes people use open houses as a way to case your property to steal stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
you're probably assuming just that just based on the conversation and all the things that, that, that we talked about, Brian, is that I charge a lot more than everybody else. And you're not going to do this. I pretty much charge what everybody else does. Now, just to show it to you, let's pretend for a, change, for a second that each one of these dollar bills that I have in my hand represents 1%. And as you can see right now, Brian, I actually have uh, $6 bills. So that equals 6%. Now, right off the bat, this is what most sellers don't understand, is 3% goes to the agent that brings the buyer. 3% I give away right off the top. Which, you know what that leaves me? 3%. And that's what I get for the marketing and the services of your property. And that may still sound like a lot of money, so I want to break it down for you. Right away, one of those dollar bills is going to go away on my broker. See, I work for a national broker. For actually, they're, they're the largest real estate company. <laughs> Three and a half. See, now we're six and a half. We're back. 
right? I was about half percent raised on this guy. You get it? People assume that we get the entire 6%. So then we're left at you know, these other conversations. They don't realize that after that 1%, you just tear the dollar bill in half, but that's against the law, so maybe fold it in half and say, hey, well, you give half, not the same, an extra 4% now based on some people's votes. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, did I offend somebody in here? <laughs> now, once we're done with that, what I found is 90% of the time they have no objections because we've been so thorough. But there's always somebody annoying that has some sort of objection. <laughs> so let's take a look at a few options. Let's talk about the types of objections that you might get. Now, I have some examples up here that I'll show you guys how I handle it. But if you can think of anything else, you're like, hey, hey, I always get this one, then you feel free to raise your hand in a second. I See, he doesn't listen, right? <laughs> well, sorry. I want to wait to sell my property until the market gets better. Pretty common? Yeah. Yeah. Right away to handle that. This is very much determined by the market here. Dan, everybody, this is Dan Green. He's a rock star agent in Florida. Dan, is your market going up or going down or stabilizing? It's going up. Going up. So it's not going to work as good in his market. A lot of markets are still kind of bouncing around the bottom. They're not really going up on all price points. One of the scripts that I use is, you know what I found? Is a lot of times that I, the price I tell you today is going to be greater than the price I would tell you in six to 12 months if you decided to wait. Because there's a lot of inventory outstanding, bank owned foreclosures, auction properties, etc. that still need to get sold before the market starts to recover. So my greatest fear for you is if you're going to wait to sell your property, in the end you're actually going to end up selling for less. Now, what I would ask you, Dan, is, I understand you want to sell it for a little bit more. When you sell your property, you're going to buy something else. Yes. Is that property potentially going to be more expensive? Yes. So what happens, Brian, if you wait to sell your property for more, you think if your property is selling for more, everybody else's properties are selling for more too. So what you're saying is you're willing to admit, if you make a little bit of money on your house only to spend more money on another home. See, what happens is that consumers don't understand that the price of money is not so much determined by the value of the property, the price of the property, but by what? Interest rates. For every 1% increase in interest rates, there's a 10% increase in monthly cost. So we might wait for your property to go up 5 or 10%, but the interest rates could go up 1 or 2%. It could end up costing as much as 20% more on your home purchase. Because right now, interest rates are under 4%, maybe 3.5%. It's not going to be too long until they're 5, 5.5, or 6 make sense? So what I think is the right thing to do is take advantage of this market, get your property sold for the right price now, let me do my job and give you a home that's potentially 5, 10, 15, or 20 percent off current market value today. You take advantage of low interest rates and we'll actually get this thing sold and you're making money. That seems fair to you? See? Make it logical. Next one. My brother-in-law is a real estate agent. Apparently, he's got a different brother-in-law than me. Get that? And she has one too. Right? How would you handle this type of objection? I might say, you know, working with family is never really a great idea in my opinion. Here's a couple of reasons why. You can't fire them once you hire them because it's going to tick off your system. Right? You can't have as curt of conversations as you need to because you don't want to offend them. With me, right? All you have to do is just tell me exactly what you're thinking and I'll address, address it. You're not going to hurt my feelings at all. Additionally, there's a lot of financial information that gets exposed in the home buying and selling process. You may not want that information to go directly to your uh, sister or to your brother-in-law. I have a great alternative where your brother-in-law can actually make more money than I can. This situation would be, let me market your property. You already said that this is the most aggressive marketing plan you've seen any agent talk about. I'll give your brother-in-law a call. I'll let him know that you decided to list with me, and he can still bring a buyer. When he brings a buyer, Brian, he'll get paid to 3%, and you'll do a lot more than half percent. He's not going to have to spend all the money that I am on the marketing and servicing you're listing. So he's actually just made my own. Does that seem like something that will work for you? Sounds good to me. You guys will not be surprised how many people allow me to call the other agent they already have an appointment with and cancel for them. They usually laugh. Really? You call them? Oh, yeah. 
I was thinking of listening with awe as I see his signs everywhere. Brian, that's what happens when we don't sell them that fast. <laughs>
seem like a fine way to work for you. Yeah, it does. Awkward. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I need to update my kitchen before my house goes on the market. Yes, you do. <laughs> sale by owner quickly at top dollar. Why not just save the money to do it myself? You guys should write this down. This is the absolute best for sale by owner script you'll ever have. It's not even a joke. Right? Some people are lucky at selling their home on their own. And I don't know when they actually sold it. It's in this market or another market. We already didn't buy or whatnot. Let me give you the stats today. The National Association of Realtors who does this huge study showed us that of the people that tried to sell their home on their own, 86% of them eventually had the list with a realtor like me. 86%. Which means, Brian, only 14% of people were successful at selling their home for sale by owner. You know what's interesting about that, Brian? Is of the 14% that were successful, 50% of them sold it to somebody they already knew. That's like a neighbor, friend, etc. Do you already know somebody wants to buy your home? I do not. I figured since you, you, and I are, you and I are talking right now. <laughs> Additionally, of the 7% that were successful selling that didn't sell to somebody they already knew, they sold it on average for 10 to 12% less than if they were marketed by a professional like me. Now, Brian, you, you saw that I only charge, charge about 6.5% to get your property sold. So you're actually making 4% by marketing your professional. But think about it like a diamond. If you're going to sell a diamond, Brian, do you think you would get more money for it at a, at a pawn shop where some people come in with it for jewelry or at a nice jewelry store in the mall? Do you get it? Because the jewelry store has people who are actually looking for your product. That's what I have as a professional. I get your home sold for the most amount of money so you can actually connect them. You know, the last stat that i got to warn you about is of the real estate-related lawsuits in the United States, 75% of them resulted from one unrepresented party. Let me summarize this for you, Brian, because I don't have a lot of stats. You have an 86% chance of failure to try to sell your home on your own, which if you are successful, a 7% chance, if you don't already know somebody, you're going to get on average 10 to 12% less, only to have a 75% chance of failure. Huh? Can you write all that down? What do you think about selling that property on your own? What do you Did the 
hire somebody that was the best in each one of those trades. See, what I've done in the real estate team is I treat it like a business, which means I have the best transaction coordinator, the best marketing manager, the best buyer's agent, the best service possible. So that whenever you call me, whether I'm sick or I'm spending some time with the family or whatever, there's somebody available to take care of you or show a potential client seven days a week. Doesn't that sound like a better idea than working with a, a, a master of none, so to speak? Yes. Do you guys get? Uh, what do you think my answer is there? No. <laughs> so, before we stand up, people leave. Uh, we'll repeat 